delivered at any deliverance service. You don't get delivered going for deliverance. You get delivered through knowledge. Today we'll be looking at power of hope. Power of hope. And Psalm 30 verse 5 says, Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. May your morning start as I'm speaking now. Amen. You will leave this service with full scale laughter. Amen. No matter how dark before now, your morning will break forth. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. The light of God's word will shut every form of darkness in your life. In the precious name of Jesus. The truth is, don't give up. There's hope for a glorious tomorrow. Year me the year is not over yet. No matter how close it is to the end of the year, before this year will end, your own testimony will be born. Well, I want to say to you, not to just testimony, testimonies will be born. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. He says, shall crown your year with his goodness. God is not a man that he should lie. He shall crown your year with his goodness and your power shall draw fatness. That scripture will be fulfilled in someone who says amen. Yeah. Tell me I'll keep my hope alive because it is not end of the year yet. There's power in hope. Hope is one kingdom virtue that is negatively portrayed and many don't even understand what hope is. It is mostly used in consolation than in expectation. Most will say, well, hope again, things will get better. Hmm? Sorry, eh? Instead of a great expectation, they use it to console people. Don't bother, eh? Just have small hope. Hope is a virtue once neglected and not understood can affect all other kingdom virtues. Then what is hope? Hope is the confident expectation that propels your desire to come through. Hope is the confident expectation that propels your desire to come through. It is a strong conceived picture. Let me take the scriptural definition. Hope is a strong conceived picture of the possibility of God's word becoming real concerning your colorful future. Taking that definition from somewhere, when I break the scripture, you understand. Hope is a strong conceived what? Picture of the possibility of God's word becoming real concerning your colorful future. That is it. I'm taking that definition from Abraham. Hope is you have a picture that what God has said in this world is sure to come to pass. And then that picture makes you, you don't give up even when things are looking tough. In Romans chapter 4 and verse 17 and 18. You saw where I got the definition from? As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. Before him whom he believed, even God would quicken the dead and call it those things which be not as though they were. Who against hope believed in what? That he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken so shall I see be. This is where I took the definition from. Abraham hoped against all what? All human logical reasoning. It was not visible. But he still had hope that what God said must come to pass. The physical reality debunked all possibility of Abraham and Sarah having any biological child. The odds were all against them. The situation in nature looked hopeless because at that age it was, it was not to have a child anymore. And verse 90 said, and be not weak in faith. He considered not his own body now dead 
When he was about a hundred years old, neither the deadness of what? Sarah's womb. That's Romans 4 verse 19. Abraham, if you look at it in modern language, was impotent. Was what? At the time the promise came. And Sarah has passed the age of bearing any child. At 90, there were no more eggs. Even if they want to do IVF. Our tubes were blocked. She has passed menopause. She was no longer menstruating. In fact, her own, she has passed papapos. She has passed what? It was no more menopause, it was papapos. <laughs> Hear this. In Genesis 18, 10 to 14, for better understanding of those who may not know Abraham's story, because if you only read Romans, you won't know where Abraham was talking from. In Genesis 18, 10 to 14, and he said, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. And lo, Sarah thy wife shall have a son. This was the promise. This is where the promise came. And Sarah had it in the tent which was behind him. Now Sarah and Abraham were old and were stricken in age. And it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. That means she was no longer menstruating. She was no longer know everything about the woman was close. Therefore, Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I am wax old, shall I have pleasure? Take note of that word. Shall I have what? That means even to meet a man, I'm no more interested. Now, if somebody is no longer having a desire like that, then how come you're talking about a child? That's the meaning of that scripture. That even to say somebody come near me is no longer there, it's dead. Do you understand what she was saying? He said, my Lord being old also. Abraham, my, you know, she, and that's where my Lord came about. You know, Sarah, she calls Abraham my Lord. You know, when you go to a judge, they say, my Lord. They talk to the judge, my Lord. It was Sarah who called Abraham first, my Lord. And what did she say? I said, and the Lord said unto Abraham, wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, shall I of a shorty bay child, which I'm old, is anything too hard for the Lord. <laughs> God confirmed it again, Jeremiah. Tell your neighbor, nothing is too hard for God. There is no sickness. God cannot heal. There is no situation. God cannot turn around. There is nothing too hard for our God. Say it one more time. There is no sickness. God cannot heal. There's no circumstance. God cannot change. There's nothing that God cannot turn around. He said, at the time I pointed, I will return unto thee, this God's spirit, according to the time of life. And Sarah shall have a son. You too will have your testimony. Amen. Sarah said she had no problem. She does not even think of getting close to a man, not to talk about having a baby. You hear me? If what you have placed your hope on is the word of God, then relax. It will happen. Brethren, there's absolutely nothing too hard for God. He says, is there anything too hard for me? Jeremiah 32 verse 27. And in verse 17 he said, there's nothing too hard for God. There's no mountain God cannot move. There's no valley God cannot feel. There's no situation God cannot turn around. Your case is not closed. He will turn it around in the name of Jesus. Amen. Say amen to that. Amen. Before this year ends, as God who is faithful to his word, he will give you a testimony of a lifetime. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. In Isaiah chapter 26, 3 and 4, Bible in basic English, I'll read it from there. Bible in basic English, he said, the man whose heart is unmoved, you will keep in peace because his hope is in you. Let your hope be in the Lord forever. God cannot change. He lacks the ability to change. So keep your hope alive. Don't quit. Sorry, refuse to quit. Don't give up. Sorry, refuse to give up. Don't give in and don't give up. 
Don't throw in the towel. Your case is not close. Stand your ground in hope based on the picture you have from God's word and see your testimonies born. Stay tuned. David Ibiumi will be right back. Follow David Ibiumi online for daily prophecies and wisdom quotes for living. Via Instagram at David underscore Ibiumi. Twitter at David Ibiumi. Facebook at David Ibiumi. You can also listen and subscribe to the David Ibiumi podcast on Apple Podcast, Spotify, Anchor FM, Google Podcast, and much more. God bless you. Salvation with David Ibiomi. An ending prosperity is God's plan for every believer. You are a God created to dominate and live in prosperity. David Ibiomi introduces prosperity series. I came from abject poverty and broke poverty by knowledge. If you're sinking in life, watch what you're thinking. You don't overcome poverty on the outside, you overcome poverty from the inside. Prosperity of the righteous. Prosperity is a function of your mental capacity. Your mental capacity triggers and determines your level of wealth. Principles of covenant wealth. Principles are not subject to the vicissitudes of nations or national economy. Living without financial pressures. Order, planning, and investments are relevant to breaking the hold of financial hardship. How to come out of debt. Contentment brings great gain. Discipline yourself and become a lender and not a borrower. Get these books at the Knowledge Center of Salvation Ministries and in leading bookstores worldwide. You can call plus 234-703-894-5714 plus 234-809. 521-6466 or visit www.smhos.org forward slash store. Hope is likened to pregnancy. Like in the what? It's likened to a pregnancy going through gestation period and at nine months, delivery happens. That's how hope is. Guess what? You have arrived at the season. God delivers abundantly and the best to all. And that season is the last end of the year. He said, you shall end the year with your goodness. And your power shall drop what? This is God speaking. And that will happen in someone's life. I like the New Living Translation part of it. They say, you, you crown the year with a bountiful harvest. Even the hard pathways overflow with abundance. This God, it's even the area that looked tough. 
Psalm 65 verse 11. You will end this year well. Look at yourself as I will end this year well. God says so. I don't doubt it. That's the picture before me. That will end this year well. Say it one more time. It may look like nothing is happening up to now. But one hour is too much. To turn your situation around. Your testimony will be born this season. I said one hour is what? One hour is too much. One hour is too much. Two hours extra too much. If it has any English like extra too much. Two hours is what? Too much. No, don't say extra too much. <laughs> two hours is too much. Too much. One hour is too much. God can change a man's story in five minutes. And what? In five minutes, God can change your story. So it's not late. I've told you testimonies over and of a man's story. Most of you have heard it on the 31st. Is that not true? Who told you it's late? Today is just, the year is too much. The days are too many. Because the best of God will come this month. Yeah. In Romans 5 5, he said, Hope maketh not ashamed. May hope make it not what? When people have setbacks, fail in life, lose in business, get defeated. Divorce, name it. They become discouraged and hopeless. They feel, well, nothing. They say to themselves, can I make it again? The answer is, hope again. What is the answer? Refuse to give up. There's power in hope. You know why? As long as there's hope, you're winning the show. You may have looked back and said, what have I really achieved in life? Look at my marriage. Look at my business. Look at my career. Name it. The year is ending. Refuse to be hopeless. Look ahead. Tell them, look ahead. Don't look at where you're coming from. Look at where you're going to. Don't look at where you're coming from. Look at where you're going to. Those who look back, don't go forward. Inside the Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. For the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. He didn't allow what was happening to affect his hope. That Jesus himself. You are not the first to go through challenges. But those who see their tomorrow, don't allow today to affect them. If you can see where you're going, you will never be bothered with what is happening now. Even if you're sipping Gary African salad, cassava, you will see tomorrow you eating salad. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Even if you're entering a bus that is almost shaking, you will see yourself in a limousine. And if you live in a house where there's no light, tomorrow you see yourself living in an apartment. You don't see what is happening today. You see where you're going to tomorrow. He said, for the joy that was said before him. Hebrews 12, verse 2. So that with me, God is with me. No matter what is happening. He said, yeah, though I walk to the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. For thou art with me, that run and the staff, they comfort me. Psalm 23, verse 4. Why we look not on the things which are seen? 2 Corinthians 4 to 18. But on the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary. They are subject to change. So whatever you are seeing now, it will change. Man, it's not a permanent situation. Temporal means, but the things which are not seen are what? Eternal. So whatever you are going through now is subject to change. Somebody divorce you is subject to change. Somebody say, well, you can't make it. It's subject to check. You don't even have transport to pay down to church. It's subject to check. A time is coming, you will give motor to people. Yeah. You will give cars to people. Yeah. Don't allow what is happening to affect your hope. Maybe you came in, you don't even know the next meal to eat. A time is coming, people will eat on your table. Yeah. Someone will soon eat on your table. Yeah. Refuse to throw in the towel. Have hope. Have what? Have hope. He said, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Evidence of things not seen. Faith on its own is barren without hope. Faith becomes substantial once hope is in place. Faith is void, vague, empty and amounts to nothing if hope is not 
in place. It is what you hope for. What you hope on. That faith brings to manifestation. Hope is seen with the eye of the mind. What you are sure will happen. While faith is saying yes, that it will happen now. So hope is what puts the picture before you. And then faith says, I bring it. It will happen because God has said so. But yes, God has said so. But if you don't have a picture of what you're thinking of, what will happen? Nothing will happen. Abraham saw that he would have children. Then he had faith that God, what you have said, nothing can stop it. Do you understand how the two go? Many say have faith, but they don't have hope. So it's like trying to say I'll be pregnant, but no woman, I don't need a woman. Is it possible? Who will carry the pregnancy? Hope is the woman. Faith is the man. Yes, the seed is from you for pregnancy. But without the woman, the seed is useless. Do you understand how it is? Huh? You have the seed for a child to be born. But how can that seed produce when there's no woman? The woman must carry the pregnancy. So hope is the woman that carries the pregnancy. Yes, you have the faith as a man, the seed that will bring forth the child, which is already done. But where will the child come? You with a man without a woman. Do you understand what I'm saying? Hope is the woman. Hope is what? Hope is the woman. So without the woman, your seed is useless. Yes, you have the seed. You have the faith to make this happen. But hope is saying, this is what will make it happen. Because of this before me, I don't doubt what God has said. The two must go hand in hand. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Jesus had the faith that he will rise. But he had hope that, look, no matter you strip me, there's a crown awaiting me. Do you understand what he's saying? Otherwise, he would have been depressed and given up. So here. That is why if you have not seen anything, nothing happens. God showed Abraham the picture of him as a father of many what? Which he hoped on against all contradictory circumstances and finally had Isaac. So what is the picture you have of what God has said to you from his word? To get any of our complete messages, you could call the number on your screen, plus 234-703-894-5714. You are God's most prized possession. Your worth to Him is incomparable. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. Not the sin, not the pain, not your shame. Jesus says, All that the Father giveth to me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. John chapter 6 verse 37 God is waiting for you with open arms. Come to him as you are. He will give you life, freedom, peace, transformation. Wherever you are, pray this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. I accept you as my personal Lord and Savior. I believe in my heart that you died and rose from the dead to save me. Now with my mouth, I declare you Lord over my life. Thank you, Father, for saving me. In Jesus' name. Thanks for watching. To watch our live services, visit our website at www.smhos.org. If you want us to pray or counsel you, please call. You can also stay connected through any of our social media accounts. This message was brought to you by Salvation Ministries, home of success.